I always feel Prashanti is like one yagnam. It's a yagnam where everyone is pouring. What is the ghee that is poured? It is the ghee of everyone's sacrifice. Everyone's selflessness. And as this ghee gets poured every single day, Prashanti glows. It glows brighter and brighter. Because this ghee is so pure. And that is how Prashanti is lit up. It lightens everyone's eyes, hearts and enlightens. Akhila Jagat Ke Data Sai If you sacrifice even a little of the world and give it to the Lord, you will see how the Lord will bring the world and give it to you. Sai See, seeing the Lord, we having the vision of the Lord is nice. But what is really beautiful is when others think of Lord when they see us. Offering my loving salutations at Bhagwan's lotus feet. Chira Sukhadaini Sai Janani Chira Sukhadaini Sai Janani Raja Rajeshwari Jagan Mohini. One very beautiful thing about our Swami is he is that Chira Sukhadaini. You know, we can get happiness that lasts for a day, for a week, for even a month. And some happiness we know are just instant gratifications. But when it comes to Swami, he is the one who can give us Chira Sukhadaini, the lasting happiness. And every time, you know, we sing this bhajan, it always fills me with uh, this reminder that if I want something permanent, if I want something lasting, then I have to go to him. No matter how much you crave for it in the world, it will be elusive. And today, just this morning, I was meeting uh, a person from the U.S. Uh, he just come, he's the CEO of uh, a startup which is into uh, AR and virtual reality, mixed reality and all that. And, you know, they're just discovering Swami. I told them that it's time now to discover IR, your inner reality. We will discuss about, talk about all this, you know, just go to Mandir and forget about all these other realities. This is the only reality. After that, you know, we can go into other discussions. And, you know, I just met them now before coming and, you know, they they were they were unable to express the feeling of being in prashanti you know uh, this much peace you know they have never felt in their lives again four years ago um, a marketing executive had just uh, stepped into the studios and uh, uh, he had not even gone to mandir and i was taking him to the mandir and he said you know i have this very strange feeling here and you know um, I felt, you know, is there anything that I can do? Are you not comfortable? He said, no. Yes, I'm not comfortable. But the thing is, I don't know how to handle this. I said, what, 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 is, uh, what is so difficult here? He said, this much of quietness, I'm not used to it actually. You know, because I have traveled all over the world. I've been to Spain, I've been to Tokyo, I've been to name it the city in the world as a, as a jet-setting marketing executive. There's always some itsy bitsiness in the air. This much happiness, this much of peace is too much for me to, uh, for me to really, you know, deal with. It will take some time for me to uh, come to terms with it. You know, and that that is the prashanti that is that is that chira sukhadaini that uh, bhagwan uh, gives us and and th that's what this couple was telling they came last night they tell they said that you know uh, 
we have never slept like this before i for the first time in my life i slept like a baby you know that is prashanti when prashanti was inaugurated i remember swami said whoever stays in this place and does any sadhana with sincerity he will be gifted with the mind of a newborn putta is to be born parti is complete they will be out of the cycle of birth and death that cycle will complete and they will be blessed with the mind of a newborn and that is what prashanti is witnessing every single day the mahila sadhana shivir just concluded and you know so many senior ladies were felicitated and we were having this opportunity to interact with them one of them said you know in 1973 bhagwan had come to shimla and when i saw him that first darshan i just felt that i belong to him i don't know i can't express this lady who is probably now 70 years old she said when i just saw him i just felt i don't need to go anywhere and that's all the experience she has had and she has worked tirelessly for the organization for that one darshan she had of bhagwan in 1973 there was another lady from assam again a senior lady she went down the memory lane and she said many years ago swami blessed her son with a locket and a chain because he was part of a cultural program and then swami went on to create vibhuti and swami blessed him profusely and she said a few years ago when my son was 36 year old he left me but today i am so strong i am working the organization with double the vigor i am the one who cannot miss any event in the organization if today i am full of energy and have no sadness and if i am really bubbling with this joy and i'm sharing this with you it is because of my swami i can't tell you how much strength he has filled me with another senior lady from orissa she had this passion to do rangoli so she would do rangolis and draw peacock and a flute that was her way of expressing her love to bhagwan every evening every morning she would draw this peacock and a flute and she said that once she was here and that year happened to be 2002 she was sitting in the studio and she was telling you won't believe i was there when the studio was inaugurated bhagwan stepped into the portals of the studio in 2002 august she said you know that morning the sevadal coordinator called and said can you do rangoli and i had never done rangoli before in prashanti i'm not some rangoli expert but i don't know why the sevadal asked me to do rangoli and i did the same peacock and the flute and i was not standing anywhere near i was standing at a distance but when i saw swami step out of his car and put his holy feet on that rangoli tears started streaming down i knew he wanted to bless me and for that one memory she has been coming to prashanti and serving another lady 40 years ago when her husband was not well he had to be taken to us for a surgery that was possible only in america and she says the way everything went on i knew my swami was there and for that one act of grace that i have experienced i can never forget my life is dedicated to him another lady who has just come for the mahila sadhana shivir she said it might not seem anything difficult anything uh, interesting for you but for me it is very significant you know what i was thinking how will i leave my elder very senior mother in law and father in law and come because you know they are so dependent on me i have to be there every day to cook for them to look after them you won't believe just two days before suddenly this cook comes and she does such amazing job and in in just two days she wins so much love and confidence of all of us in the family and she says you go amma don't worry i will look after them and today even as i speak to you this lady was telling me i just called them and they are so happy how can i tell you how swami has arranged everything so that i can come for this event 
another old lady. She said, you know, a few years ago, now I am already 70. I had to go through an operation. And when I was in the operation table and I was recovering after the surgery, I was praying to Swami and I was telling Swami, this is such a difficult moment for me. You should, you should be with me. You should in some way show your presence. You should, I should be able to see you. Please give me your vision. And I was intensely praying for him. And then on the, in the ward, I saw another patient. And this patient was uh, having a very difficult time. You know, senior person, he was vomiting and he was uh, coughing a lot. And, you know, you, you could see that he was really going through so much pain. And I immediately prayed to Swami, Swami, you don't have to come. Swami, you don't have to give me any vision. You just, just cure this person. I can't see this, this much suffering a senior person is undergoing. And she says, you won't believe. Just in, in a few minutes, that person was sound asleep. And after that, I also fell asleep. And in the dream, Bhagwan comes and gives me the vision. What can I tell about how he has trained us to feel for the other? Jina Uska Jina Jo Aron Ko Jeevan Deta Madhuvan Kushubu Deta Sagar Savan Deta Jina Usika Jina Jo Aron Ko Jeevan Deta Only if it beats for others, then it is a heart. Otherwise, it is just an efficient lump of flesh, just pumping blood. That is not heart, isn't it? And this Swami, in all our lives, after He has entered, how He has converted this lump of flesh into a heart. How He has poured love into it so that it has learnt to beat for others, learn to beat in sync with the heartbeat of the universe. And we feel him so much, isn't it? The other day I was just walking out of the mandir and this 11th class boy, he stops me and he starts narrating stories of how so much he wanted a moment with Swami. How so much he wanted one chance of taking prasadam tray and getting it blessed at the sannidhi. And he started telling me for 15 minutes the story, how he has been praying for this, how he went to the teacher, he asked for this chance and how that chance was not available. Then he told his friend and his friend said, don't worry, I'll pray for you. Then he went to the Ganesha, he went to pray, pray to Ganesha and then every day he was trying how to constantly exploring how can I get this chance and then one day unexpectedly he gets this chance but he doesn't have a shirt the friends comes out from nowhere and says I have this shirt you can wear this shirt and he comes and and he has the opportunity of going to Sanidhi and offering that prasadam you know as I was listening to him I was just thinking about the stories that we used to narrate, we used to experience when Bhagwan was there physically. This is this this was our our journey, right? Every moment, every every time you wanted a chance with Swami, you wanted how can I go get a Padmaskar? How can I how can I get uh, one more chance of uh, uh, a photo with Swami? How can I get this pen blessed with Swami? How can I get this uh, prasadam blessed with Swami? How can I carry the prasadam tray to Swami? And I'm listening to the same stories now. It's not different. Kahe bandhe sai ko janam maran ke bandhan Kya is satya ko 
भूल गए क्या इस सत्य को भूल गए कि साई बसे हैं कण कण में काहे बांधे साई को जन्म मरण के बंधन He has bound us in this bandhan. He is out of Janama Marana Bandhan. And he has showed us the way how to be out of this Janama Marana Bandhan. How to experience this Chira Sukha, this permanent happiness. Let me take you back to how he bound my family to his lotus feet goes back to the 70s. My father was working in Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in a very little town in Odisha. In fact, my whole view of a town was there will be one factory and everyone works for that factory. Every morning there is a siren and everyone gets ready to go to that one place of work and everyone's fathers, everyone's uh, mothers go to that same place. I mean, that was how I was brought up. It was a very, very little town. It was all green. If the Odisha Tourism Development uh, Department was developed, it would have become a hill station. It was a factory that was manufacturing mix. So it was a very secretive location for the government. In fact, during the India-Pakistan war, they painted all the houses green just so that from the top, it looks like it's just a forest. They wanted to hide the big manufacturing facility. So that's how small this uh, place was where I grew up. And my father decided to stay in this place because there was a good school. Because it was a township which had people from all states. And uh, among the uh, convent English medium schools in Odisha, it was uh, one of the very good ones. And my father said, you know, education is most important for my children. We are three brothers. And he said, uh, of course, he at that point in time didn't have resource to put everyone into English medium. By the time I was born, he had the wherewithal uh, to put me in an English medium school. So he did not want to go the government way. If, if he had joined the state government, he would have probably had a much better career remuneration. But he said, no, this is most important. And so that's how uh, I was studying in the school and my father was working in HAL. And it, it was during this time that one of my father's colleagues who was working in Another factory adjacent to HL, about five kilometers uh, from where we are staying, comes to my father and says, have you heard of Sai Baba? You know, he's divine. And this is what the organization does. And my father said, please, I don't want to hear about any Sai Baba. I'm not interested because for me, my God is Venkateshwar of Tirupati. That is what my mother has told me. For my father, my mother was God. My grandmother was God. So whatever grandmother said, my paternal grandmother, that was Veda for my dad. He was very, very extremely devoted to her. And since grandmother said, our God is Balaji, Venkateshwara, that's it, full stop. So our shrine always had only Balaji, just like you know many South Indian families. And my father said, you know, I don't want to be pulled into any other god or guru. You, you just uh, leave me. But this person, uh, one Mr. Pradhan, was a very close friend. And father had a lot of regard for this person also because my father came from a very humble family. And, you know, he didn't really have uh, enough means to even... Uh, by books and study during his engineering days, uh, he literally actually studied under the street lights. And 
it was this pradhan this friend who came from a very resourceful family but he was least interested in studies so he would splurge all his uh, well i mean all the money that he got from home in entertainment and partying and everything but for some strange reason he loved my father and so he would buy all the books that my father wanted with only one condition saying that i will come to you before examinations two days before examination you just tell me what to study if i pass i am perfectly okay you get your rank my father was a rank holder he was he was state rank holder uh, you get your ranks i am not bothered just tell me what to study two days so that i clear the engineering and my father was very grateful to him for the help that he had rendered to him during his uh, academic years and uh, so when this pradhan insisted that you know uh, you, you you take this photograph of baba keep it so father could not refuse so very reluctantly you know he kept it in one corner uh, in the altar but you know it, it was just uh, there uh, he had no feelings for bhagwan or he didn't feel anything about it a few days after this father went to the house of this pradhan and as i said uh, you know mr pradhan had always this vagabond life and that continued even after his marriage and you know uh, and father had known father had seen that you know uh, even though there was vast difference uh, in the standard of living of both the families but they were very dear friends and one day father went to his home and he was shocked to see that this pradhan who always liked expensive cars and expensive clothes and uh, uh, drinks and uh, cards and cinemas and everything that's what his life was all about suddenly he saw that all the furniture from the friends from from pradhan's house had disappeared all the wall hangings everything had gone there's only huge picture of swami the racks carried only books about bhagwan on the floor there was only a mat no sofa nothing and mr pradhan pradhan's wife told my father he spends his time only in japa dhyana or in office that's it if he's not in office if he's at home he's not interested in anything now other than singing bhajans he was a very good singer singing bhajans and meditating on swami reading sai literature that's all his life was and it was such a shock for my father how could he transform so much i mean who who is that power on earth can bring like a 180 degree transformation in him and he thought if somebody could do this he, he has to be out of the world and if this sai baba has entered pradhan's life and brought this degree of change then maybe i cannot just dismiss it i need to explore and that is how his journey to bhagwan began you know we do penance we pray we pine for a vision of the lord it is laudable it is laudable to have a vision of the lord through our sadhana through our yearning but i feel what is even more commendable truly breathtaking is when others envision the lord when they see us we seeing the lord we having the vision of the lord is nice but what is really beautiful is when others think of lord 
when they see us. And that is what happened with father when he saw Mr. Pradhan. My mother, being a religious lady, was already going in the afternoons to these Gita classes. There were all these ladies' communities who would do uh, spiritual satsangs. And so she would go to any holy environment. Afternoons were generally free. So she would go to Sai Bhajans and she loved Sai Bhajans. And so she would tell my father about Bhajans and Bhagwan. But what really got my father thinking was this transformation in Mr. Pradhan. And after that, interestingly, Bhagwan started sending his visiting cards. And Vibhuti and Kumkum, Kum, all that started coming out of Bhagwan's photographs in our house. And there was another devotee in our township from his house. His name was Vibhuti Raju. And his house was full of Vibhuti. And I think in every town, every city, we have such instances. And uh, so all of them, all of these had some impact. And there was this group of uh, devotees who were going to uh, South India on a trip. And my father asked, are you going to Puttaparthi? And they said, yes, we will go to Puttaparthi also. Then my father said, okay, I will also join. So that is how father joined this group to come on a pilgrimage tour, South India. So they went to Rameshwaram and everything. And finally they came to Tirupati and to Puttaparthi. It was the time of Dasara, 1979. And it was the last day of Dasara when father stepped into Prashantin Lem, those days of sands and, you know, the Poonachandra auditorium was there where the Yajyam was happening and there was so much crowd and he being uh, of short uh, frame uh, like me, um, he, he was unable to see anything, unable to, you know, if, if he sat down, there were so many people sitting, you know, he was unable to witness the celebration going on and he was very keen to see what was happening. And so somehow he managed to sneak into that crowd and he thought, you know, if he goes right to the end of the hall, then probably if he stands with his back facing the wall, then, you know, he will uh, be able to stand and nobody would object and at least he can see something. And so that's what he did. He went right to the end, far end of the Punichandra Hall. And he stood there. And from there, he started witnessing the Yagnam. And that was the time when the Purnahuti was in progress. And so as the oblations were done and uh, the uh, time came when Bhagwan went near the fire, you know, we know how Bhagwan would sit just right in front of the fire, in front of the Yagnam Kunda. And Swami, uh, would also, at the opportune moment, would offer oblations into the fire. So Swami would stand up and then Swami would uh, uh, sprinkle uh, Navaratnas, holy grains, akshatas, yellow grains, and all that would fall from Bhagwan as a shower onto the fire as the Purnahuti happens. And, you know, and uh, he, he saw all this... Uh, uh, final oblations and the pitch. Om Namaste Astu Bhagavan Visveshwaraya Mahadevaya Trayam Vakaya Tripuran Takaya Trikadi Kalaya Kalagni Rudraya Nila Kantaya Mrityam Jayaya Sarveshwaraya Sada Shivaya Sriman Mahadevaya Namaha. So he was watching all this high decibel chanting of the Yagnam. And as the Yagnam Purnahuti concluded and you know we have seen how Swami would stand like a pillar next to the fire. He would be that pillar of orange next to that fire. And then Swami raised both his hands and he went first to the lady's side and he blessed. He did Abhayasta. He blessed 
everyone with both his hands on the lady's side, on the gent's side. And as Swami was blessing, father saw something very strange. He was not seeing the palms of Bhagwan. In Bhagwan's palms, he was seeing Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, Nrsima, Rama, Krishna, Buddha, all the avatars he was seeing in Bhagwan's palms, and he, he stood there transfixed to the spot and he thought, what is this? What is this that I'm seeing? Is it really true? Am I hallucinating? So, so he asked the person next to him, you know, what are you seeing? And he said, I'm seeing the hands. That's all? Nothing else? He said, no. And again he saw and he was seeing all the avatars of Bhagavan. And father knew that it was a special blessing that was being conferred. And so sure he was of the profundity of that moment that he came back from the Yagnam. He went to my mother and said, I have found my God. From today, we are not going anywhere else. There is nothing else to see. There is nothing else to achieve. There is no other holy place. We need to go as a pilgrimage. I have found everything. I am fulfilled. Vishwarupa Tumaho Vishwarupa Tumaho And Bhagwan had such gloriously entered our lives. And like every Indian child, Indian family, whatever the parents do, you just follow. Father returned from that trip to our home with huge pictures of Swami, whatever money he had. He bought every book possible. So he came back with the Vahini series, Satyasai Spirit, Satyam, Satyam Sham Sundaram and huge pictures. And that's it. Bhagwan became the center of our lives forever. And from then on, for all of us children, the only prayer was, how can we become close to Swami? We started reading Sanatan Sarathi. We came to know that there is a university. We came to know that, you know, we can study here. And it so happened that one of our brothers, senior brother, he got admission in Vrindavan. And this brother, when he returned to our town during his vacations, the kind of sigh waves he generated submerged us. Because when he came back, he would conduct Balvika's classes every single day. It was vacation for us. And there were so many students of the township. And every day we would have like one, one and a half, two hour sessions with him. He would teach us carols. He would teach us, uh, tell us so many stories. He would teach us shlokas. He would teach us all these songs. I knew before I joined Bhagwan's college, I knew, Tu kitni achi hai, Tu kitni bholi hai, Pyari, pyari hai, Oh ma, Oh ma, Oh ma, sai ma, wife, when I am here. I knew I was familiar with all this because this brother took so much pains to tell us about Bhagwan, to teach everything that he had learned in Bhagwan's institution. And that intensity to become a student like him became so intense. For all of us in the family, all three of us brothers. And in fact, this brother set that tradition that after him, 
whoever joined Bhagwan's institution from our town had to do Balvika's classes every single day during the vacation. And I used to do that because that became a tradition. If you didn't do it, then you are odd man out in our in, in in my town. And you know that was one way how Bhagwan. Uh, uh, allowed me to just relive the moments that he had blessed me with when I was with him. And when I went back, I was only trying to share whatever I had gathered that year and pour out whatever I had little I had learned, I would share. And as I came, I remember when this brother used to come back to Parthi, he would tell, you know, what can I take back from you all? And you would say, okay, all of you write letters. I remember, you know, it, it used to be such a teary moment when this brother would leave. Uh, I, I, I can still imagine, you know, those that evening, you know, there was the last class and all of us were just crying. It was almost like we are crying as if, you know, uh, later on, you know, it's like when Swami leaves, Prati, you cry. It was like that. This much he had filled us with Swami's love. You would, would sit and cry buckets that his brother is going off. And, and we would make cards. So you say, you make cards for Swami. Don't make anything for me. He would make all these cards and he would take it to Swami. Later, he would communicate. Swami accepted. So same thing happened when, you know, when we, all of us joined, when I became a student, do the class. And as I conclude the class, I would ask everyone to, you know, give your love, send your love to Swami in the form of cards and letters. And they would send and we used to have that opportunity. I, I remember occasions when Swami would so, uh, so happily, uh, Swami would glide along and come hurriedly and take this pack of cards that, you know, I had carried from the little hearts of my town in Odisha. So that's how Bhagwan not only filled us with his love, but ensured that we became carriers of that love in our own little ways. And in this early 90s, when I had still not joined uh, the school here, there was one beautiful uh, incident that unfolded. Something that not many know and something which is connected to the Prashantinilayam Museum, the Sanatana Samskriti Museum that you see here. You know, there are so many such little, little stories we will never, ever know. Every stone, that's what I feel. Every leaf and every pillar of Prashanti has a story. Every photograph, everything has a story. And it's always a story of beautiful sacrifice and beautiful selflessness and beautiful devotion. If only we can document these eternal tales of love, pure love. So it is the year 1992 and uh, I was telling you about this brother. His father was very devoted to Swami and you know they had the opportunity of many interviews also with Swami because once this brother became a student, he was very close to Swami. Swami would talk to him. So they had had many moments of interaction and uh, it was a sudden inspiration uh, for this uncle that uh, we should do something for Swami and uh, he came up with this idea that why don't we offer to Bhagwan the deity of Odisha, Lord Jagannath, Lord Valabhadra and Mother Shubhadra. Why don't we make statues and take it to Prashanti? You know how uh, in Odisha every home has... Uh, uh, idols of Lord Jagannath and it's like how Venkateshwara is there in every South Indian home you will find Lord Jagannath an indelible part of every Odia household and so everyone was very geared up uh, with this idea and there was in our town a very beautiful sculptor uh, he had made beautiful Jagannaths and uh, so the the members of our Samiti, little Samiti, uh, they were all very charged up and yeah, let's do this for Swami. And uh, so 
the planning had begun the first thing is you need that wood and you know not every wood is used to make statues so there are only two three types of wood and one is neem wood so they were searching uh my father uh, being a civil engineer and you know being the sevadal coordinator of the samiti uh, so he was uh, one of the lead persons uh, trying to organize everything for this project and so he went all around the township looking for a neem tree the right neem tree which could be used for uh, making this statue and you know for for days and weeks he searched and he couldn't find anything and he was you know very depressed and one day he was just sitting at home and as he was sitting at home and you know looking at our garden we had garden on all three sides his eyes fell on the neem tree that was there in our garden and this neem tree was very strange this neem tree unlike other neem trees had grown like a single column it's 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 straight like uh, you find probably coconut trees it was just straight and it was a huge stem no branches up to 25 feet it was just a column very neat column and my father thought why am i looking everywhere else this was the perfect tree actually to make statues and even when i think of it it is under that tree that my mother always used to do narayan seva there was a schedule my mother always would feed a handicapped a orphan a senior person so on fridays this leper came sat under that tree and mother would feed on saturdays this beggar came and mother would feed on mondays this orphan came and mother would feed because swami had told about this ceiling on desires every day you have to keep some rice apart and feed someone so my mother would do that very diligently not only uh, you know um, people uh, like this you would she would feed all the beings every day she would feed uh, uh, dogs and cats and monkeys even today as she lives in prashanti every day she has to go to the terrace and you know give something to the squirrel uh, keep some food for the monkey keep some food uh, she would drop some food on the parapet so that ants can eat you know it is so much part of uh, her culture that she will not feel like eating unless uh, she feeds uh, someone and all the other beings so, so it was that tree under that tree so much narayan seva had happened and that was the chosen tree which when i think about it for so many years it had grown in that compound it had been fostered by the seva and sadhana that my parents had done and now that was the tree that everyone agreed was best to do the statues of lord jagannath balabhadra and subhadra and the whole process started i remember it was on ram navmi day when the tree was felled and uh, the person who did the uh, statues he was a very very pure person for he did it like a sadhana you know, like for for 30 days uh, just eating once a day and leading a very very austere life and and the statues came out so beautifully there's so many miracles that happened as the statues came to prashanti nilayam uh, because in those days you know you have to change trains and uh, um, there was only meter gauge train Uh, to dharmavaram you didn't have railway station in puttaparthi so they had to change trains secunderabad and when they go to the waiting hall they they find that suddenly the whole place is clean it's almost like somebody has prepared the place uh, for uh, the lord to arrive when they come to dharmavaram they were all wondering can they really fit all these three uh, images into that meter gauge bogi and miraculously they go in so many miracles happen and they brought the jagannath balabhadra anshubhadra to prashanti nilayam and uh, 
Bhagwan was informed about it. And there were 33 people who had come. Now. And Swami did not speak to this group uh, on the first day, the second day, third day. And, you know, uh, some people now had doubts and uh, some people started leaving and some people indeed left. And by the time it was the fourth day, there were only 18 people left. And that day Swami called. And uh, Swami spent so much time in the interview room talking to this group. Later, Swami called uh, four core members uh, who were part of this uh, whole endeavor. And Father was one of them. And Swami told, bring the statues to the Purni Chandra Auditorium. The statues were taken. And Swami said, what did you bring? And Father said, Swami, uh, we have brought uh, Lord Jagannath, Balabhadra and Shubhadra Swami. And Swami said, no, no, no. You have not brought Jagannath. Swami said, Jagannath is here. Jagannath is here. We are only statues. You have brought the statues of Lord Jagannath. Jagannath is here. Natana Sotradhari Jagannath Sai Natana Sotradhari Jagannath Sai That is how today, if you go to the Sanatana Sanskriti Museum, you will find Lord Jagannath, Balabhadra, and Shubhadra gracing this museum. And as I said, take every artifact of that museum, take Every exhibit of the Chaitanya Jyoti Museum. Take every tile of the planetarium roof. There are tales that we do not know. But what we know is that they are tales of deep love, deep sacrifice, deep dedication, and deep commitment to Bhagwan. I always feel Prashanti is like one yagnam. It's a yagnam where everyone is pouring. What is the ghee that is poured? It is a ghee of everyone's sacrifice. Everyone's selflessness. And as this ghee gets poured every single day, Prashanti glows. It glows brighter and brighter. Because this ghee is so pure. And that is how Prashanti is lit up. It lightens everyone's eyes, hearts and enlightens their minds. That is our Prashanti. And having discovered this Lord, having known this Lord, I longed to be a student and I became a student. Let me take you to the winter vacation of my 11th class. You know, having done so much penance to become a student, because for me, the only sole goal of my life as I was, when I was studying there, uh, you know, 8th, ninth, 10th was just I have to become a student. So I, I, in fact, you know, in those days, I stopped using my cycle. I thought, you know, once I become a student, I have to walk from hostel to mandir, which means it's two kilometers walk. I have to get used to walking. There I cannot sleep uh, on the court. I have to sleep down. So I started sleeping down. Uh, you know, I know that uh, Swami wants that we should respect our mother. So I should never disobey mother. Whatever mother asks, I should do. And I should tell mother, you have to pray. Otherwise, I can't become a student. So the, the, the kind of things, everything possible that is, you know, uh, I know I can't have too many friends there. Okay, fine. So, so I just disconnected. I just wanted that. There should be no stone unturned to become a student. And finally, you know, 
when I became a student, uh, after that, I did not want to miss any moment. So when the winter vacation happened, I didn't want to go back home. In, in 11th class, not many students stay back. You know, in college, you would find a lot of students staying back. But I was probably very few uh, in the school who did not go home during the winter vacation. And Swami, during that winter vacation, did something absolutely extraordinary. Swami called one afternoon, once the vacation started, all the students who have stayed back to the Poonich in the auditorium. And when we went to the auditorium, we were asked to sit on the stage. And when we went to the stage, we saw that the stage was covered with heaps, heaps of vibhuti and heaps of kumkum. There only mounds of vibhuti and kumkum. And our job was to make packets of kumkum and vibhuti. This is after the Dasara celebrations. And so, we were very happy. We are in Punachandra Auditorium. You know, that was the time when Swami was staying in the Punachandra Auditorium. And we are in Swami's home. And we are getting this chance to do this seva. And the first day, we go there and they gave us this uh, Sairam, Om Sairam paper. Uh, and we started making these Vibhuti packets. Hardly we have worked for 10-15 minutes. And the curtain parted. And Bhagwan came. And Swami came and Swami said, Oh, Papam, my boys, you're working so hard. Kuch kaam nahi hai. Kya hai? Just packet banana hai. Oh, Swami said, No, you're working hard, Papam. So he said, No, nah, okay, you give them something. So biscuits came, then tetra packs came, and then some uh, gadgets came, some calculators came, some fruits came. So we were sitting there just accepting one gift after the another after another. And Swami was like just pouring, pouring every single uh, moment of that uh, time that we were there. And I was so submerged with love. And, you know, hardly we have done some work. And after Bhagavan left, we quickly did some packing. We came back and we were really looking forward to the next day. Again, we were called. So the next three, four, five days, every day we are going to Pune and we are filled with gifts. It came to a point where Swami started giving robes. And for what we have, we have done nothing there. And he was just filling with food, chocolates, uh, ice creams. I, I can't even remember the number of things he gave us that vacation. And I just felt, oh my God, what did I really do? Just a little, just a little sacrifice. If at all, if you can call that sacrifice. I didn't want, I did not go home. And here he was pouring me with love, just letting me know that, see, you decided to sacrifice a little of the world and give it to God. See, I will bring the world and give it to you. If you sacrifice even a little of the world and give it to the Lord, you will see how the Lord will bring the world and give it to you. And from that class, from 11th class, I never went home for vacation, be it summer or winter. I went home only if Swami was not there. If Swami went to Kodai Canal, only then I went home. And never went home. And I thought, what I'm getting is like heaven. I can always, parents can come, I can just see them whenever they come. If you make God priority one in your life, then you will see how you become priority one for God. We are always priority one for God, but we begin to experience that once we make God priority one in our lives. Even when I was studying in Bhagwan school and college, even when I was doing my MBAs, it never occurred to me that, you know, I should step out 
and work anywhere else because i used to always feel that all the wealth of the world cannot give me one day with the lord one day with the lord what is gone is gone if i go now yes i might go i might be able to set up a career i might be able to earn a lot i might be able to enjoy many things that the world provides but can i get back this one day with the avatar the avatar comes once in a millennium will i get this chance somehow that thought used to overpower my mind so much that i always thought that i cannot miss this he is priority one and as swami says choose the kingdom of god and everything else shall be added on to you i have literally experienced this yes if i probably if i had gone out i would have become with time like so many classmates are there, i have become some manager some vice president something in a company but today i am in a place where the vice presidents are not one company but so many they come here and i interact with them and it's not just of one company i ha- i have people who come from all disciplines musicians to ministers to politicians to businessmen to uh, industrialists to artists to just just now i, I met the uh, the chief technology officer of of a big company everybody comes here he's given me everything and i always feel if we choose the kingdom of god no matter where we are this this has been my life but all of us wherever we are if we make god priority in our life we will see how everything else will pan out as if we are priority one for god and i always feel we may not be rich with great amount against our name in the bank but our life is so enriched because all our wealth all our money instead of we trying to spend our little mind and manage risk return it's all with him there is no risk and there is the best return that one can get we know that if you need anything he will give it until then let him manage if i manage i am not a great investment manager let him manage let everything be with you for me and i know that if i need it it will come because forsaking all i trust him that is what is faith if we have that faith if we say swami you are everything for me you are the center you are the sum and bottom of my life you are priority for me that's enough we will see that our life will be enriched in ways that we can never imagine we'll never be lonely no chance of being lonely your life will be only lively you know full of people they'll be full of life they'll be full of miracles every day i think any little sacrifice for the lord will never go without giving us in return a bumper of grace let me share one other little incident again in the school days 12th class uh, you know all the school uh students the college students we always ask for class interviews it was uh, uh like that when i was a student you know we would always ask so me class interview class interview one memorable interview entire class and you know we didn't get that class interview and you know so me say so me said okay how will you how many of you 70 70 how oh, how 70 how can you fit it's not possible we know how interview room was is so small so i said no 35 35 we said no so me will no problem so me will adjust some and literally 70 70 people entered the interview room we have seen hundreds go into the interview and come out no idea how that happens but we have indeed seen that uh and so you know we had that lovely time with bhagwan uh you know I, i remember asking so many questions to swami during that interview and swami taking tender coconut from us and uh, i i remember there was there, there was this uh, uh uh stream on the wall there was a stream of tear as if in the wall 
and he said and and you know we are so me what is this uh, you know suddenly how 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 is this uh, little uh, wetness in the wall and swami said you know it, 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 the walls are also not able to contain that love that is pouring from me to you and you to me you know we were so submerged uh, in that love you know in that that session with swami after that interview we felt no we should do something for swami something we have to do and so all of us discussed in the class we were in i was in 12th and and we decided we'll do curtains for swami interview room curtains and two robes one orange one white and so we did all this we got it stitched everything and we sent it to swami one afternoon and i remember that day it was hardly 2 o'clock classes were still going on and there is this news that swami is calling 12th class boys so we rush to the mandir and darshan has not yet started swami has come very early we dashed into the interview room and as soon as we settled down at his feet only question swami asked is hey whose idea is this who got this done nobody is telling us yes, no, swami we did it together swami we did it together swami swami we love you swami please swami swami is like no who 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 is the mastermind who did all these things tell me why did you do this and we kept saying no swami we, collectively we did swami please swami it went on and on and on for 10 15 20 minutes and finally we had to say okay swami this boy initiate and i know i know this boy only this boy only i know and then swami as how much each of you contributed you know, we had contributed a very very little amount from 50 rupees Swami went inside, and I remember he came back with a bundle of notes, and in everybody's palm, he kept fifty, another fifty, another fifty, another fifty, for the little measly fifty that we had given. He was telling, "I will give you five fold. I'll give you four fold." it is that feeling of we'll do something for swami as i said no amount of sacrifice for swami will ever not give us a bumper of grace i think all of us have experienced that in our own ways and these very very impressionable moments with bhagwan during the school days have continued to be moments which taught such profound lessons that you know when when it came to doing something for swami you never hesitated because you know that this is something that is going to enrich your life in ways that you cannot ever imagine it was again my school days and uh, you know during the dasara celebrations on those days just like it is now there used to be cultural programs and one of the uh, days the cultural programs would be also by students so there would be professionals who would perform even during the speakers you know when it comes to speakers there would be student speakers as well as there would be scholars uh, just like it is today and so one of our teachers came up with this idea that you know why don't we offer to swami a kavi samelan and so they invited uh, students to write poems and so this whole process was going on screening of poems so i had also written one little odia a poem for bhagwan mm-hmm. and uh, the day we were supposed to uh, 
perform uh, in the Pune Chandra Auditorium, this Kavi Samelan. The day prior to that, there was a Kavi Samelan of Andhra's exalted poets. In fact, it was a very, very uh, uh, learned, uh, breathtaking session because you know you had these uh, scholars who are called Ashtavadhani, Ashtavadhani's. You know, which means you know Ashtavadhani is someone who, who, uh, if eight people tell different compositions to him, in he can just recite back in the same order, the same sequence. Everything in that one minute. There will be scholars who could be given a, one particular word and they can they're asked in one minute to compose uh, a, a couplet which all ends with this particular letter and has this and both these meanings, esoteric and physical. So all these really superlative talent uh, kavis were there. And I remember it was it was a very uh, very um, intellectually rich session. And I think probably only those who were uh, very good, very good in Telugu understood uh, what uh, the session was about. But people were clapping because it, you were just in awe at their knowledge. And in fact, Bhagwan had kept thrones for them. It was like the thrones on which Bhagwan used to sit. There were there were thrones kept for them. And uh, but I had seen that Swami, you know, during that entire session, he was just uh, he was just looking up. He was like lost. You know, once in a while he would open his eyes and he would see them, but otherwise he was just in some other world. And when the session concluded, Swami came. Swami did create one chain for one of them. And the session, you know, ended. And the next day was ours. And, you know, we were like, oh my God, what, with what face are we going to present anything to Swami? Look at them, look at their talent and look at their uh, presentation. What are we going to do? But I remember on that day, uh, our teacher who was coordinating, he said, don't worry. Let us let us go like dust to Swami. We we are dust of his feet. We'll go like dust to Swami. If he wants, he will create diamond out of us, but we will go as dust. And that is how the Kavi Samailan happened. And and I had the chance at that time to also uh, sing one little Odia song that I had written. He Prabhu to me, Otta Dayara Sagara Dayakari Karamuti Tuma Purnara Tuma Bina Nirarthaka Jibana Muhara Charana Kamale Raki Thani Rantara. So this was a uh, song which, which just talks about, you know. Lord, keep me always at your feet and without you, there is no one. You know, even before I became a student, my prayer used to always be to Swami uh, that Tumari charana bina anath hai hum. This was my anthem song, you know, during the days when I was not a student. I would every day sing this and I used to pray. To Swami. So this is the feeling that this Oriya uh, lines also conveyed. Uh, and, you know, that session went on so well. All the brothers, you know, some were singing. Ajneesh uh, also was there part of this uh, uh, ceremony. I remember this Kavi Samelan. And, you know, some were singing, some were reciting. And in all languages, there's so many uh, in Tamil, Odia, Bengali, Kannada, Telugu. And, and Swami was so involved. Unlike the previous day, he was so involved. He was looking and like, you know, he was like on the edge of the seat and he was like waiting for what will come next and what will this boy present, what will that boy present. And you, and uh, after the uh, Kavi Samelan was over, Swami was like, ah, over, that's all. No more. He was like, come on, do more. And then he, so excitedly he came up to the stage, onto the stage. And our main compare was Anil Kumar, sir. He was comparing the whole thing. Swami had then asked for shawls to be brought and the shawls were brought. And then Swami personally put the shawls on each one of us. Personally, he draped us with those shawls. I have those shawls with me now, the brown shawls. And then in the end, he called Anil Kumar sir. He put one on Anil Kumar sir. And then came the most sweet moment. He, take, he took one shawl, he opened that and he put it on himself. Just saying that, you know, just I'm, I, I'm one with you. 
I love you so much for what you have done. And then he called all of us. And, and if you see that photograph, it was like we are all hugging Swami. It was like a big hug. That's how everyone was squeezed with Swami. We have that photograph. That, that topic was soul inspiration. That was a the theme of the program. If you go as dust to Swami, He will make a diamond out of you, provided your intent is pure. You may not have great IQ. Sharp IQ may help you master the material world. Maybe may even even take you to God like this poets. But it is only intense PQ that will make God come to you. What is PQ? It's your purity. IQ might help you to conquer everything in the world. Might take you to the doorstep of God. But it is only your purity, your purity quotient, which will make God come to you. And when God comes to you, the whole world is with you. The whole world follows you. More than the content, it is that intent which is most potent to win the heart of God. And time and again, so many experiments that I've had the chance to do while studying at his lotus feet. And even now, I know for sure that if anything touches the Lord, it is this intent, this purity of intent. And to me, Swami is nothing but this purity personified. He is nothing but just this purity who just reflects our feelings. He is that absolute pure gold and is here to make all of us that gold, that bangaru. All we have to do is to live for Him. If we love Him, we have to live for Him. We have to deserve every moment of, the, of grace that He has given us and He continues to give us. The way to deserve is to serve. Remove the D, remove the E, remove the desire, remove the ego and serve. And you deserve His grace. And you live in joy. You live in happiness because every day of your life is only bringing to you miracles. Miracles of His love. Miracles where tests become testimonies of His love. Miracles when every hurdle becomes only a bundle of grace. And that's what life is when Bhagwan becomes priority one in our lives, we begin to experience His love every second and eventually pray that we become that love. Thank you so much. Really grateful for this opportunity. When you go on down the memory lane, there are so many thoughts, but I was able to pull out a few and share these beautiful moments. It was reinvigorating for me and I hope it was of use to you too. Thank you so much. Sadam.